Hey guys, my name is Jay Wilson. I'm the lead developer at Onyx Reporting and Data Strategist. I wanted to talk to you guys for a brief moment about data warehouse automation and how it benefits developers, but also really get um, take a look at one of the applications that I use when I'm developing data warehouses for clients. Uh, it's Time Extenders Data Warehouse Automation Server. Well, let's take a look. Um, the biggest benefits to data warehouse automation, or the idea behind it, is that you have an application that's generating code for you. And the principal benefits of this are that it allows you to iterate faster. As a developer, instead of focusing on small things like data types changing or you know, actually going through the process of extracting the data from the ERP, keeping track of what the data type was, et cetera, um, as I load into Staging Database, I have a tool that does that for me so that I can focus on things like asking, okay, what is the most optimal design um, to facilitate the analytics and reportings that my clients are asking for? Or more importantly, when the clients change their requirements in the middle of the project, how can I quickly and agilely respond to these new requirements? Um, in addition to allowing me to iterate faster by having generated code, we, we start seeing better maintainability and sustainability. Um, this application has integrated version control. So if I do a whole bunch of work or somebody else comes along and does work and breaks the project, we can go back to previous version of the project. Um, because it's generated, documentation is automatic. Um, and really the thing that I appreciated the most when I was getting started in data warehouse development is that instead of, it, instead of the code and what is being produced being reliant on my knowledge and I'm just one person, um, I'm actually benefiting from the decades of combined experience that all of the developers who worked on this product have put into this application, right? The code that's getting generated isn't just, you know, my best practices, what I know to be good, but it's actually um, been tested by people far smarter than me um, to say, okay, this is the most efficient way to get this conditional lookup, or this is the most efficient way or a standard way of doing X, Y, and Z. If I go and look at the code that the application is developed, is creating, and say, oh, there's a faster way to do that. Um, this application does allow me to imp use my own custom code. And that's because what we're gonna see is that this application is not a black box environment. It's not a closed environment and you can't see under the hood to see what's being done. I need to put the word not. <laughs> It's actually quite open. You can see every single um, SSIS package. You can see every lot, every view, all of the code that gets generated. And what we're going to see is it's very transparent. It's just using the Microsoft BI stack. Okay. In the grand scheme of life, even if you're not a developer, you should care about this because as a business owner, it's all about reducing risk. That contractor that you brought in to work on the project again, who knows how much experience he has, but I guarantee you that the application team that developed this has more combined experience. Does that make sense? All right, so let's take a quick look. All right, so here's the application. I'm going to go ahead and connect to a data source. Again, we're not just limited to SQL databases. We can bring data in from virtually any source. Um, obviously, all of the standard ones, like an Excel spreadsheet or a text file, um, but we can also work with bringing in Oracle databases. Um, we can grab data from a lot of dynamic sources, SAP, we have the SAP table adapter, all of this are sources that data can come from. And yes, it will get stored and transformed into in a Microsoft SQL table. And then it will get loaded into a Microsoft SQL um, data warehouse. Um, but from there we can, yes, we can um, push the data out into SSAS cubes, we can push the data out to click or using the data export functionality, we can send the data back out to some of your original data sources. Right. Um, but for the purposes of de this demonstration, um, let's say that I'm going to extract data. Ooh, all of a sudden my keyboard stopped working. We are going to extract data from a SQL database, and it's as easy as, uh, to get started, it's as easy as right-clicking, read data objects. The application is currently scanning the database, it's finding all of my tables, all the fields, all the, the field data types, relations, etc. And 
and now I can see the whole list of tables and I can just choose a random one. We'll grab address here and grab a couple of columns. Okay. Now in clicking a column or two, I'm basically saying, yep, this is data that I want extracted into my data store or into my staging database, depending on vocabulary you choose to use or how you're structuring this. Um, and to make it all happen, it's right click, deploy and execute. Now you can just, you get a feel for what's going on um, in my task list where um, extracting data using SSIS, we're cleansing data using a stored procedure. Um, we've created a raw table for storing the data. Um, if there's any validation issues that get stored between the message and the log table, there's a valid table that stores the actual data that passes validation. It just, it works. And the best part is, is even if you're not a died in the wool BI developer, you can, you know, read a book or two about data modeling and then actually do great things for your organization. So in SSMS here, um, we've got artifacts of a previous project in here, but we can see, all right, let's select the top 10,000 rows. We can see really quickly uh, it did what it says on the tin. The data was extracted from um, our AX database and deposited into a staging database called addresses underscore R. Now when the user comes back and says, oh wait, you missed a column, we need to add, we need to add, I don't know, longitude and latitude into our analytics. It's a matter of going back into the data source, clicking the columns that you want, and again, we're gonna deploy and execute and these new columns will be added to our staging database. So now you can see here we're extracting longitude and latitude. Now I did say this is not a black box system, it's all open. I can go right click, advanced, look at the custom code. I can take a look at the SSIS package that was used to extract the data um, and I will look at that using obviously Visual Studio. So we're grabbing data from an OLADB data source. Here's a SQL command that was used. We're adding a derived column to name the data source. And then here you can see the movement um, that, or sorry, the destination of the address underscore R table in our staging database. Now, I don't have to tell you what the advantages are here, right? Um, obviously, if you want to do more sophisticated things using um, Visual Studio, you can integrate your own custom work, your own custom scripting. Um, or you can just say, well, you know what? I'm gonna follow best practices a la Time Extender, and I'll take all of the data, extract it from my ERP, drop it into the raw table in my staging database, and from there I'll do all of my transformations. And transformations in the Time Extender product are very easy. Um, for example, if I say, oh, you know what? I definitely have data entry problems. Sometimes the county is coming in blank. I'm gonna add a field transformation that says, you know what? All of my counties should say London. And it's very transparent. Um, I don't have to read through a block of code. I can just see very easily, okay, there's a little plus symbol next to this field that lets me know that there's some sort of something going on. I see I've got a transformation that makes it a fixed value of London. When I deploy and execute, this is where it starts getting interesting. Now, when I execute the raw table, notice the county still has the original data as extracted from the ERP. However, when I switch to the T table or the transformation view, you'll see now I see the transformed data. 
This is super important from the auditing perspective, right? Um, as a developer, I don't really care about auditing. I mean, I should, but I don't right? really care about auditing. I just need to get the job done. But as a business owner who has to go back to auditors and say, yep, this is what happened to our data at each phase, we can see here in the raw table, this is what the original data was. In the T table, this is the actual data that got passed into our data warehouse, and this is what we're basing our assumptions off of. Now, like I said, it's an open box system. I can go into the views here. And I can see, okay, what were the transformations that went on in this view? We can see here, you know what? We took, well, here's a transformation, right? It's easy, it's plain as day to read, um, but it's also very straightforward in, um, in the application. Now in cases where you have to do a slightly more sophisticated transformation, let's say I want to make a um, composite key, um, a business key of, um, let's say, oh, I didn't grab customer number. Well, let's make a business key of name and city. Okay. So. I can add a field transformation on this new custom field. Oop, sorry, didn't set the data type. Let's edit that field again. Uh, we'll set it text length 30. We'll do our field transformation, add a custom transformation, where we'll take name plus city. Piece of cake. Standard SQL transformation. Now we're going to deploy and execute. Okay. You'll notice here that we redeployed the raw table, which means we had to extract the data again, because what we actually are going to see um, in SSMS is that we physically added a new column to the raw table that is empty. So let's go here. Our, I have a new column. BK name city, and it is null. And the reason, of course, why it's empty is because we don't actually see the transformations until we get to the T view, where now we can see the name concatenated with the city. Easy as day. Um, now from here, you know, we might add a data validation rule. We might add Sorry, we might add a field validation that says the name cannot be empty. And depending on the severity, that data will either show up as a warning or an error. If it's an error, that means that data will not move on into our data warehouse. Um, and if it's uh, just a warning, then yes, of course, the data will move on into our valid table and then on to the data warehouse. We'll make it an error. Let's deploy and execute. Let's take a look over on our errors tab. In the errors tab, we can see all of the instances where the name did not comply with the validation rule that it not be empty. Okay, so again, um, there might be cases where we have to apply some sort of a business rule that says, you know, this field must reach XYZ criteria or not. Now, as a fledgling, you know, as a new developer, I may or may not have ideas about how I'm going to handle this use case. Again, we're taking advantage of all the decades of experience that this product application team um, has when they said, you know what, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to, implement our idea of best practices, which is to say all of the data, um, regardless if the name is empty or not, will get extracted into the raw table so that we can meet our auditing requirement that says all of the data gets transferred. Then what we'll do in the log table, we'll keep track of all of the records that for whatever reason did not match a validation rule. Now in this case, error number one, 
error number one has a severity of error and the field name does not comply with the validation rule. So anything that has error number one will not exist in what we'll call the valid table. So in this valid table here, um, you're going to see only records that pass the validation rule. And it's this table that will um, use to transfer data up into our data warehouse. So let's take a quick look at our data warehouse here. Um, I've got a data warehouse. It doesn't have any tables in any fields in it or tables in it yet. I'm just going to do a drag and drop. Bam. SSIS transformation for that. Done. Taken care of. Now, when you're talking about loading your data warehouse, obviously you don't load all of the fields and, uh, and tables um, from your staging or operational data store. You'll only choose the important ones. In my case, I don't need name because I've got that already. I don't need, I don't know, city. All right, we can choose what does and does not get moved. And of course, if I deploy and execute, it's going to work the way we expect it to. Now, what is also interesting is that I said this automation tool allows for um, responding to user requirements, and it really benefits you when you're trying to work in an agile environment where the requirements are shifting. For whatever reason, my users you know, said, you know what, we need to change the data type of our business key um, to being Unicode. Now, even though I changed the data type of this field in staging, that doesn't mean that change um, automatically moved up into um, into my data warehouse. So when I right click my data warehouse, I do have the option of synchronizing data types, which will scan all of the, the data movements and say, oh, hey, in your address table, you have a, a data type, a, a trans, uh, you have a discrepancy between the, the data type and staging and the data type in the data warehouse. Additionally, if for whatever reason we decide, oh, we need to rename the column in staging, in the data warehouse, we can see that because it is um, parameterized, because all the data movements are parameterized, we can see, oh yeah, the field name changed, but it won't break the transformation, and then I can choose to rename the column in the data warehouse or not. So from the top level, I'll deploy and execute, and all of the changes that were created run through. Okay. Obviously, my intention was not to build any sort of a functional data warehouse. What I really wanted to do was introduce you guys to the idea of data warehouse, uh, data warehouse automation as a tool that auto-generates code, as a tool that allows us to empower our developers to focus on developing or designing data models as opposed to, you know, sweating bullets over, you know, where did I miss that transformation or, you know, anything like that. I also wanted to get into this idea that it's not black box development. Just because you use the data warehouse automation tool does not mean that all of a sudden you have to learn a whole new skill set, a whole new programming language. We're still very clearly working with the Microsoft BI stack. So all of that expertise you have with working in Visual Studio, all of that expertise you have um, writing SQL, you can still leverage that here in the data warehouse automation tool, or alternatively, you can just um, empower a more junior BI developer to, to really understand the data model, how data modeling works, and let them drag and drop um, and develop with equals um, speed. In any event, my name is Jay Wilson. You can find me at jae at onyxreporting.com. If you have any questions about this presentation, please let me know. Have a great day, y'all. Catch you later.